So joining me now here in Mission Control Houston, Dr. Hans Christian Gunga. He's one of the principal investigators for the circadian rhythm study. Uh, it's taking place right now as we speak on board the International Space Station. Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata is engaged in it. Uh, Dr. Gunga, thanks so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. And first, start me off real quick. What is what is this circadian rhythm study? Why is you know why why are we doing it on board the International Space Station? Um, actually, this is a very important question mm -hmm. because the uh, the astronauts they they do not have a real day there. They have several days and sunsets yeah. and such and so there. There is uh, over the millions of years we have developed, uh, the organism has adapted to this sunset and sundown. Mm -hmm. So we have an internal rhythm and this internal rhythm is very important for your capabilities, for your will, uh, vigilance, for all the things you are doing, whether you sleep or not sleep. Mm -hmm. And so if that rhythm is destroyed by having Every day, uh, several times, uh, sunsets yeah, I mean, and sunrise. That, that makes it sunset, up. Sun sunrise, that, sunset, you know, every 30 actually, minutes or so. That's, say, yeah. that's, uh, that's actually the case. And that's why uh, we uh, introduced this study mm -hmm. to uh, analyze uh, by measuring the core temperature. That means the temperature in the body. The okay. temperature in the body is a signal for this circadian rhythm. You usually you usually have in the morning here mm -hmm. on the ground between five and six uh, a.m. You have the lowest temperature. That okay. means in the in the body about thirty six point five, and you have your highest temperature in the afternoon at six p.m. or so. Mm -hmm. And this is about one degree. It sounds sounds less. It's only one degree uh, mm -hmm. difference. Not a huge difference, but it's, no, no, it's, it's but, measurable. But it's measurable, and it's a, it's a strong signal for the organism. You you must realize that the the core temperature, this changing of metabolism, mm -hmm. and several other functions, they um, are introduced by your internal rhythm, which is coming from the, all the different, or it's organized from the or, different um. inputs. And uh, the core temperature is, so to say, the master of the orchestra, of <laughs> the different functions. Yeah. It's like an orchestra. If you, and you can expect if the, the master of an orchestra is not ready, yeah. and if it's uh, uh, working with different Orchestras. That is a real. That's a mess. Can, yeah, it can mess you up. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, and like I had mentioned, Koichi is participating in this right now on board the station. You know, what's he doing? You know, see, you have the yeah. device right uh, here. Yeah, actually, that is. It's it's the same. It's not exactly the same, but mm -hmm. it's the same measurement device. And here you see, this is a kind of sensor we are using for the measuring of the core temperature, mm -hmm. and. Usually, you have to go with several probes into the rectum, into the ear, and so. And that's not feasible for. The, that's a little not, uncomfortable for. Yeah, that's very. Uh, at, at least, at least, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. And but this is a new type of sensor. It's actually not measuring the temperature, mm -hmm. but it is measuring the heat flux from. For example, he's placing that on your on your okay. front, and there's it fixed for 36 hours. Okay. And here inside, you have two sensors, mm -hmm. and one sensor is measuring the heat coming from your front, going okay. to the first sensor, and then going to a certain material, and then coming to the next sensor. And this heat flux represents in some way uh, your body core temperature, especially on the... Kind of an indirect way of measuring right. that. Right. Okay. It's, it's an indirect way, uh, which is um, has to be transformed by certain algorithms mm -hmm. to... Uh, yeah, to to get the core temperature profile. That's all. That's okay. what we need. All right. And that's later on. That is stored then on these devices, mm -hmm. and we uh, get the data down yeah, several weeks later, and we do these measurements not only on one time, but in the in the, in the early beginning, mm. and then every month at least, so that we can see whether there is a change in this mm -hmm. uh, curve of the core temperature, and we expect that the the amplitude, so to say, how how uh, the the delta between mm -hmm. normally that is reduced due to certain fa facts. Okay. Well, so what what are you guys really hoping to, you know, find out and almost solve? So uh, Okay, that's uh, the, the 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 uh, uh, one of the the main points we would like to look at mm -hmm. uh, when in the mission we have certain rhythms and whether you have the same rhythm 
as I have. So it's not clear mm -hmm. who is more disturbed by this kind of uh, circadian yeah. rhythm changes and the others. So this gives you an example uh, and gives you some hints about the uh, capabilities of the different subjects and uh, at least it, uh, it's important for our opinion for long to really long-term space flights and we have to look at, at, m at methods and at uh, technologies probably to keep mm -hmm. That rhythm yeah. and that can be that can be done by by special lights or by by very structured meals or so very structured day. Then you have can have some inputs and uh, we are working on that. But that is that is so to say the terrestrial part. There's also uh, the uh, the space part. We have so also a terrestrial okay, because yeah. uh, this this is now uh, just uh, in the last uh, year we had uh, several measurements in the German Heart Center for heart transplantation mm -hmm. because these people. They have not a high temperature, they get very low. They had mm -hmm. a body temperature at 16 or 15 degrees, so they are very, very low to keep. They are waiting for the heart. Mm -hmm. And this device can be placed outside the, 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 the thorax on the, and to, to protocol their core temperature. So, so very non invasive. Very non invasive. It's easy to clean. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I think in, in future, you will hear much more about heat flux sensors mm -hmm. in clinics for monitoring, for example, not only at big uh, operations like, uh, like uh, heart transplant, but any kind of uh, narcosis mm -hmm. will shut down your possibilities to regulate your temperature. Yeah. And so you, you probably after, uh, certain you get hypothermic because your body yeah. do not mm -hmm. react. And this can be protocoled by this temperature. And so there's a direct clinical application of this uh, method, okay. which we designed for space. So, the, the, I mean, and that, that really is an amazing, you know, Earth example of just technology developed to find out why astronauts can't sleep, and now it could do something. Like, I mean, it's amazing right. how it can That's, transfer. Uh, we are very, very, we are very happy that this could be transferred mm -hmm. to it, and uh, um, yeah, looking forward yeah. about the results. All right. Well, again, Dr. Hans Christian Gunga, one of the principal investigators for the circadian rhythm study. Uh, thanks for you know coming on and telling us about it. It's, it's fascinating. I I mean I hadn't even thought about temperature being used to you mm -hmm. know regulate sleep cycles, things like that. I just learned something pretty amazing today. So I uh, really appreciate you. you coming on. Oh, thank you. Thank you.